Welcome to the No Time Theology Podcast, a Bible-based theological show where we dive into the big topics and questions of our Christian faith. My name is Brandon, and in today's episode, we are performing a brief theological reflection on the Derek Chauvin trial. Yesterday, Derek Chauvin, the cop who we now know for sure killed George Floyd, was found guilty of two counts of murder and one count of manslaughter. Indeed, it was evidently uh, a joyous day for many of the U.S.'s minority communities, and it got me thinking about what should be done next. What now is a question many Americans are asking. Where do we go from here? As a Christian, I asked myself that question as well. And one of the first things I did after I saw that verdict was simply pray for Chauvin's repentance. And I was watching Ruslan uh, yesterday, uh, if you're not familiar with him, he's a streamer, uh, uh, I guess you could call me, I don't know what you call him, a, a Christian influencer, I guess, or something, <laughs> something along those lines. And he was having people in his live stream comment live about what their thoughts were, and many people were just saying that they were praying for his repentance, uh, they were praying for peace in our nation, they were praying that not only uh, the police uh, would be held more accountable in our nation, but that people would treat the police kindly and respectfully, and especially people would not uh, take Floyd's death and turn it just to riot and loot and use it for their own ends. And truthfully, I mean, truthfully, the gospel... I mean, the gospel is really our only hope for this world. I mean, in reality, we can pursue whatever form of police reform that we ought think is necessary. Um, we, we can pursue whatever societal changes that we want, systemic changes. We can pursue those things, yet we know that ultimately, as Christians, the gospel is truly our only hope. And we can disagree on, you know, whether or not uh, Chauvin truly did commit all three counts that he was charged with. Uh, we can disagree on whether or not Floyd should be memorialized. I understand that he was indeed a sinner like you and I, who held a gun up to a pregnant woman's belly. And we have to reconcile those imperfections with what we see occurring in policing today, the type of people who police have to deal with, yet at the same time recognize the utter injustices that go on around us and advocate for change wherever necessary. And so in my last podcast, I, I shared some thoughts on the social justice gospel. And fundamentally, I mean, in the last podcast, I, I tried to convey that People such as Senator Reverend Raphael Warnock, by tweeting out uh, on Easter Resurrection Sunday, that he, he said that that more transcendent than the resurrection of Christ, more transcendent than the true meaning of Easter, is social justice, loving our neighbor, doing things of this nature, works. Fundamentally, any sort of works righteousness, no matter what that work is, no matter how charitable or how good or righteous it is, nothing trumps the gospel and Christ's resurrection on our behalf. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Nothing trumps that. And if anything, if social justice is truly to be social justice, it ought to stem out of the gospel. It is not the heart of of the gospel, but it stems out of the gospel. And so, as Christians, I said that we do have to be careful with what ideologies we allow into our lives. We are very keen to be careful to not listen to too much secular music as it may influence our manner of thinking. We are often very keen to keep our circle of friends consisting of like-minded Christ followers. We're very aware of these things. Yet too often we allow secular ideologies to permeate our minds simply because they seem right or that's what everyone else is doing. 
And I contend, and I contended then in that podcast, and I contend now, that any view of social justice that is not rooted in the Bible, we must be extra discerning with. We can acknowledge the need for racial reconciliation in accordance with Galatians 3.28. We can provide for the widow in our community who is in need in accordance with 1 Timothy 5.3. We shall not oppress the sojourner or foreigner who is in our land in accordance with Exodus 23.9. These, for instance, are just and righteous values that are rooted in the word of God. The truth is that not all Christians advocate for such values. And at the same time, some cite biblical morals, principles, and verses, yet go beyond the realm of God's prescribed intention. I I was watching a a recent video by Mike Winger, who's been making uh, some, some videos on progressive Christianity lately and regardless of your views on progressive christianity as a whole he was talking about this uh this this minister who wrote this prayer book and in her prayer book she wrote a prayer to god that she would hate to white people and this type of stuff is what is fundamentally not found in the gospel but it's found in secular ideology secular motives Not biblical motives. Because if she would have understood that we are all one equally valuable in Christ Jesus, that Christ has gotten rid of the tension between Jews and Gentiles, that classic racial tension, she would have understood how just outright wrong, praying to hate white people, complacent, good-hearted, perhaps, white people. And she wasn't saying that she wants to hate uh, the white people who uh, are actively hating uh, other minority groups or minority groups in general. She was just saying that she wanted to hate the ones who are good-hearted grannies. (laughs) And this is not the type of stuff that we want to hold on to. And so especially in a very polarized time politically and socially, we need to be extra discerning. And pray that God's will would be done in our world, that His perfect justice would take place. And as we await that perfect justice, we shouldn't just be idle, but we should actively push the saving gospel of Jesus Christ out there and reform whatever uh, parts of society that need reform in order to conform to godly righteousness. Another interesting case It's Reverend Brandon Robertson, the gentleman who I made my first podcast on. Robertson, this this minister, claimed that Jesus was racist. (laughs) And I talked about that. And in one of Robertson's sermons, interestingly enough, he claimed that God was the deceiver in the garden and that Satan was the truth teller. And this is just another example of being discerning when it comes to many tenets of where Christianity is moving in its more progressive wing. That God would be the deceiver is just outright unbiblical. And I often just ask myself, I mean, what what are these people's motivation? <laughs> you know, like what is their motivation I understand that perhaps it could be godliness in the world, but it's just so skewed and and distorted from the Bible and the gospel message that we see therein. And Robertson tried to defend himself in a recent TikTok, but he ended up only affirming his, his views, and that only caused more Christians to believe that he's a terror, possibly sown among the wheat. And so what is the solution to all these issues? What is the solution for all racial issues, for all classist issues, for all sin issues? Jesus Christ, our Lord, is the solution. Recently, I was driving through my old hometown and 
there have just been so many there's such a, a ridiculous amount of people who have died in reckless shootings there and i saw some signs and small vigils that were left to young people who had been killed in gang violence or third degree murder so on and so forth and the truth is our world is such an unsafe place because we as human beings are just so sinful we are just lost in our sin and sometimes we don't even see our sin we don't even sometimes see the sin that is around us and it's very it's very reasonable just to not feel safe in our world it's because of how depraved and how far away our world is just drifting from God and the scriptures. And so as Christians, this should encourage us to do even more work in the world. I, I heard an interesting comment from Ruslan uh, again. He was responding to a... I believe a minister who was saying that street preaching and street evangelism is the only form of evangelism and ministry that Christians should engage in. That we should just completely forget about any type of online or social media ministry. And the truth is that we need this type of online ministry as well. That just as secular media allows their own commentary and their own thoughts conservative and liberal whatever the case may be as they get their thoughts out there followers of christ also need to get their thoughts out there and ironically as i was listening to ruslan comment on or respond to that minister i passed a street preacher ironically or providentially i suppose on the corner making an invitation to christ to come to christ And it's interesting that this is something that not even Christians can agree upon. <laughs> that we just disagree over everything. We can't even agree as to what the most effective method of evangelism is as our world is suffering so incredibly. Just get the gospel out there is what I think. In the midst of societal and all kinds of injustice, just get the gospel out there. The truth is, you can be the most charitable person in the world. You can do all the good works you want. You can do all the, the, the civil rights movement that you want, yet if you reject Christ, then your works are in vain. That's a hard belief. You can be the most forgiving person in the world, but if God has not forgiven you, then your forgiveness is futile. You can be the most loving person in the world, but if you do not love God, you cannot truly love. Why? Because God is love. Martin Luther King. That man could have righteously fought as he did, but if he had never accepted Christ, all of his good works would have been considered as nothing before Almighty and Holy God. As I stated before in my last podcast, I, I, I just repeat it again. Nothing trumps the supremacy of Christ and his gospel. No good work, no act of forgiveness, no act of justice, not even the putting away of Mr. Chauvin which he did indeed earn for his violent action. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is the penultimate reality of the universe. It is the Alpha and Omega. He and he alone is the beginning and the end, and only he will rid the world of its sin and establish his everlasting kingdom on our planet. In light of this, I would like to read Amos 5, 15, and 16, then 21 through 24. The word of God reads, Seek good and not evil, 
that you may live, and so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you. As you have said, hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. And now this is the Lord speaking to this unrepentant people. I hate, I despise your feasts, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them, and the peace offerings of your fattened animals, I will not look upon them. Take away from me the noise of your songs to the melody of your harps, I will not listen. But let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. May we, as Christians, establish justice for all at the gate of our cities. May justice roll down like waters, and righteousness, godly righteousness, not a secular idea of righteousness, not our own ideas of righteousness, but biblical, godly, gospel-centered ideas of righteousness. May these flow like an ever-flowing stream. I want to close by simply saying this. Christ is the only hope for a broken, sinful, and unjust world. It is only in the one who died on Calvary's hill that we might have salvation. So let's spread that salvation. Let's fulfill the commission that Christ gave us to preach to all creatures, to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As we wait patiently for the godly restoration of our world, for the time of justice rolling down like waters, let us pursue justice by heralding the gospel of Christ Jesus our Lord. For it is in Christ where perfect justice will be established.